Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to you all uh, to our service of Holy Communion here in the parish of Wargrave with Noel Hill. We're delighted that you have been able to join us. Now, later, Hayden Selwyn Jones will read Psalm 84 to us. And in this psalm, the psalmist writes, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. As we meet to worship the Lord today, following our annual parochial church meeting, let's pray that as a church, we would grow stronger in Jesus until the day when we meet him face to face. Our first hymn encourages us to sing to the Lord, to sing to him with all of our strength, living our lives as a praise offering. Let's sing together. Everybody. You might wonder what I'm doing upstairs. Well, you probably don't realise I'm upstairs, but I'm upstairs in our house because I haven't been able to find John. And I've heard something going on in the bathroom. I'm just kind of not quite sure what it is. I can hear some running water, but um, and John isn't anywhere else in the house. So I'm going to go and see if he's in our bathroom. I'll see you in there in a minute. Uh, John, excuse me, but... What are you doing? This looks really strange. I've heard there's going to be a flood. I'm trying to rescue my friends from the flood because it's only going to get worse. Oh, John, no, 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 no. The flood isn't here. It's not in our bathroom today. You've got it totally wrong. Okay, so we are going to be learning about a flood, but not a flood in our bathroom, thankfully, or hopefully not at the moment anyway. Um, we're going to be learning about a flood in, from, in the Bible. Uh, you've got the passage at home. It's a fl uh, flood that we read about in Genesis. And as we do that, I would love you to think about these questions that I found on our bathroom door. A few questions I'd really like you to think about this week are, what did God do? And who did God rescue and why? What did God do? And who did God rescue and why? But before you go to read about this particular flood in Genesis, we're going to sing a song together. And because today is all about uh, celebrating uh, our church and giving thanks to God for what he's done over this past year in our church, uh, we're going to sing together a song which reminds us how wonderful it is to be part of God's church. Let's sing together. Before the world began, God made a master plan to bring all things together under one head. That head 
is Jesus Christ, who died and rose to life, and now he's seated at the right hand of God. Once we were dead in sin, now we are raised with him, by grace we're saved through faith in Jesus alone. His body now, united by His power, joined with His people of all over the world. We are the church, have you heard? He washed us clean. the children leave for uh, their Sunday club at home, we're going to have a time of confession, a time of bringing uh, those thoughts and words and deeds that we know are uh, displeasing to God, those things that have grieved him, uh, have saddened him in our lives. Um, and we do so knowing that he promises that he will forgive us if we come with sincere hearts. Um, and he promises to forgive us because of the Lord Jesus, because of his blood shed for us on the cross. 1 John 1 says, if we claim to be without sin, 
we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So let's come before the Lord together in a time of confession. Lord God, have mercy on us according to your steadfast love and in your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions, cleanse us from our sin, create in us a clean heart and life and continually renew a, a right spirit within us. Amen. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may leave, have, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools, and they go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord Almighty. Listen to me, O my God of Jacob. Look upon the shield of God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God and dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. So good things, do, so no good things does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 6, verses 37 to 40. Glory to you, O Lord. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we come to look at God's word together, I want to say a couple of things about the last six months to the church family. First, enormous thank you to you all for what you've done to serve our community, our parish, our church in this particularly complex time. And thank you for those put numerous hours in of hard work and particular thanks from me to Steve, Hugh and my wife Camilla, who've helped so much with all the technical side, as well as countless other things as well. And I am deeply thankful to have such a fellowship of Christians surrounding me at this time. But let's have a prayer before we look at God's word together. Our Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that your word would shed its light and encouragement into our minds and hearts for your glory. Amen. Well, Psalm 84 verses 1 and 2 
How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for court to the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. This psalm has been a great encouragement to me the last six months. It has a deep longing in it for fellowship with God. In the Old Testament, this was only possible in the courts of the temple. So the psalmist is jealous of the sparrows. The sparrows, the most numerous birds in the world, most numerous common birds in the world. And the sparrows perch there in the temple. The psalmist continues, even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may leave her young a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. It's been good in recent weeks, though it's not normal where you are meeting, to return to our church buildings at Knoll Hill and at Wargrave. But neither of those are the temple, and the New Testament reminds the place where God dwells is now among his people. We are the temple of the living God, as Ephesians 2 verse 21 puts it. But actually we miss being together. And that's why the Sunday services, despite smallish numbers returning, about 50 to Wargrave, a few less to Knoll Hill, it still seems incomplete because so many of God's people of all ages cannot be with us. And I found myself, like the psalmist, longing for the Lord's dwelling place when all his people can gather again. We're trying to work out the way ahead because of the problems with aerosol at transmission of COVID-19. And we are trying hard to minimise the risk of any such transmission. And we're seeing, aren't we, a second spike at the moment. Who knows what Christmas will look like? It may be very different to the sort of church life you would normally expect. But for now, like the psalmist, we are on a pilgrimage uh, through the wilderness of, if not lockdown, certainly semi-lockdown. We're longing for the Lord's dwelling place. We're crying out for courts of the Lord. And the psalmist continues in a very unexpected and positive way. After all the yearning and looking back, to what he was missing. The psalmist says, it's slightly strangely worded to our ears, blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. I found myself these last months, being very nostalgic and uh, thinking, I wish we could go back to how it was before COVID. The danger of nostalgia is it imprisons us in the past, and we need now to live in the present. The strength of the Lord can still be found, even when we're not meeting physically together, when we're meeting online, scattered around the parish and elsewhere. Yes, online services, our own Bible reading and prayers, as well as other resources, can make sure that we keep our spiritual strength in what is seemingly a desert place. And notice in this psalm that the desert is turned into a place of springs. We are bearers of spiritual refreshment and renewal to all those around us. We weary pilgrims are longing for home, not just home church, but for the fellowship and the life and vitality we know together. And yet we can still have that in the present. We can make the wilderness blossom. 
And even now, in different places, as opportunities given to each one of us, we can make sure that in the present, God's blessing blossoms in different ways. We need to continue in his strength to make the most of the journey until, God willing, before many more months, we can meet together again. Let me read, though, as I conclude, some verses from John chapter 6, which again have meant a lot to me, because at times we wonder what on earth the Lord is doing. But here's Jesus speaking, John 6 and verses 35 to 40. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you've seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Here's a great verse. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he's given me, but raise them up on the last day. Let's trust and pray and believe the Lord is giving us people now to point Christ out to them. And yes, the promise is that none of that will be lost. The Lord will preserve it for the present and for eternity. Let's pray. <coughs> Lord, help us at this time of pilgrimage to trust you, to keep on going in all the frustrations and the changes and uncertainty. We thank you, Lord, that nothing, no one you've worked in will be lost. Thank you for that certainty. And may we make the present wilderness blossom as we move on as pilgrim people, for Christ's sake. Amen. Our creed today is based on some words from Ephesians chapter 4 and reminds us not just of our calling individually, but actually together as Christ's church in this place. We remind ourselves individually and also as Christ's people here across the parish about our belief and our calling. We say together, we believe in one body of the church, one Holy Spirit, one hope to which we're all called, one Lord Jesus Christ, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Amen. In our prayers today, we give thanks for the positive discussions held at our APCM this morning. For all those who contributed, for all those who'd listened, and for all those who'd organised this meeting. We pray for the wider church throughout the world. We pray for our Archbishop Justin, for our Bishop Stephen, and Olivia, and for John, and for Hugh, and for Steve. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, we ask you to bless all those who follow in his steps and give themselves to the service of their fellow men. Endue them with wisdom, patience and courage to strengthen the weak and to raise up those who fall, that being inspired by your love, they may worthily minister in your name to the suffering, the friendless, 
and the needy, for the sake of him who laid down his life for us, the same Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. God our Father, you sent your Son to us. Grant that, filled with your Spirit, we may be renewed in faith and inspired in hope and love to spread the gospel of your kingdom to all humankind through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in this season of creation tide, we thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings that we have in this life. For all things bright and beautiful, for all things dark and mysterious and lovely, for all things green and growing and strong, for all things weak and struggling to push life up through rocky earth, for all human faces, hearts, minds and hands which surround us, and for all non-human minds and hearts, paws and claws, fins and wings, for this life and the life of this world, for all that you have laid before us, O God, we lay our thankful hearts before you, in Christ's name. Amen. We pray for the sick, for those especially known to us at this time who need our prayers. O oh God, the source of life and health, we pray for those who are ill. Give doctors and nurses skill to make them well again, that during their illness they may know more of your love and care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Church's prayer for this time when we experience the difficulties of COVID-19. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We summarise these prayers with the words that Jesus himself taught us. So we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We come now with bread and wine to recall our Saviour's death in our place to rescue us from hell for heaven. And so I'm going to use a simple prayer of consecration or thanksgiving. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, and who made there a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, ablation and satisfaction for sins of the whole world, he instituted and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, 
and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Having received these precious reminders of our Lord's love, so we join together now in the Lord's Prayer, asking that the Lord's priorities would be ours in all of our living. So we say together, as our Saviour's taught us, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
time of prayer as we go into a new week. So try and make the most of every opportunity. And so let me lead us in a prayer of blessing. The God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle us in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. In a few moments time, there'll be an opportunity to uh, link up for what we call Zoom coffee and to catch up with people scattered around the parish. All strength and every blessing to you all in this new week.